even if we dramatically reduce the death rate and really provide actually for a very high quality of life. It's the same technologies that are going to provide su substantial expansion to human longevity are also going to provide substantial expansion of resources, water, food, uh, housing, physical things that we need for our lives. So we'll keep making babies even though we are immortal, right? I mean, old methods, old technologies linger on. They, they go into antiquity. We still have horse and buggies and mechanical typewriters and vinyl records, and they don't go away instantly. Uh, we'll have other ways of reproducing ourselves, but... Uh, but what about sex? Uh, <clears throat> it will be uh, separate from reproduction. Tell me about sex in the future, especially the virtual sex. Well, what is sex like today? Is it, is it only done for reproduction? Uh, you know, almost well over 99% of the sex is done for intimacy and communication, relationships, uh, sensual pleasure, uh, you know, for all kinds of reasons yeah. other than reproduction. And we've already separated, you know, to some extent the biological function from these communication, social, and sensual yeah. functions. But, but describe so, how it's going to be. Well, uh, for one thing, we'll have sex in virtual environments. Now, there's a lot of sex already in Second Life, but it uh, requires a little bit of imagination because it's really what you experience is just the sound and visual image of your avatars uh, having an interaction. Uh, in the future, uh, virtual reality will be full immersion. It will feel like your body uh, is in a virtual environment. Uh, and it could be the same body you have in real reality or a different body but you'll be walking around. Uh, and the way that will work, the nanobots in, will go into your brain. Uh, they will expand your intelligence. They'll interact with your biological neurons. They'll be on the Internet. Uh, but they, they also could shut down the signals coming from your real senses, your eyes, your ears, your skin, replace them with the signals that your brain would be receiving if you were in the virtual environment. So then to your brain, it feels like you're in that virtual environment. You go to move your arm. It doesn't move your real arm. It moves your virtual arm which could look like your real arm or it could look different. And so you can be an actor in these virtual environments. And the environment can be different, just like choosing a different website. Some will be like earthly environments, like walking on a beach or the Taj Mahal. Some could be imaginary environments that don't exist on Earth or couldn't exist on Earth that are fantastic environments. Uh, you can choose different bodies with different environments. A couple could become each other and take on each other's body, or, or, or you could just become, uh, take on the appearance of some mo movie star or what, whatever you, you want. And then you'll have uh, interactions with other people, just like you do today on Second Life, but it's only visual and auditory. In the future, it, it will be tactile. You touch another virtual person, you'll feel them. And uh, so you can engage in... Uh, sensual experiences from shaking hands to, to having a sexual experience. So we are going to be immortal and we can take any shape? We're going to be like gods. Well, there's an interesting discussion about immortality. Uh, it's not necessarily the case that software lives forever. It can transcend the hardware that it's on. Right now, we, our software runs in our brains. So this, this and the software is, is built into the shape of the brain and the connections and so on. But when the hardware crashes, the software dies with it. We have that idea, call it death. Uh, we don't have that idea with our machines. We can already see that the software has a separate life from the machine. You back up the software, you can smash the machine, and then you recreate the personality of the machine by just loading the software in another machine. Uh, we are, the whole pattern of connections we have in our brain and neurotransmitters and ion channels, that's all information, when we can capture that and recreate it, uh, we will become just like the software on our machines today. And it won't necessarily die when the hardware crashes the way we do now. But that doesn't mean it's immortal. Suppose you forget about some word processing program and you go back to it 25 years later and it's a program written in WordStar. There's no copies of WordStar around. There are no computers to run them and the operating systems don't exist and the help desks aren't exist anymore. And try recreating that software program. It's pretty much dead because you forgot about it. Uh, 
the lesson is that software lives only if you care about it. Uh, that's pretty much true of our lives today. If people don't care about themselves, they don't tend to live very long. Uh, but that will very literally be the case. We will have to maintain ourselves. You can't just forget about you know, your software files for 20 years and come back and you'll find that it, it's disintegrated. It doesn't run anymore. Nobody's kept track of it. Nobody backed it up. It doesn't run on the latest hardware. Um, so that's actually kind of a moral lesson that, that software lives if somebody cares about it. And when we become software, we will live if we care about ourselves. Uh, so software doesn't necessarily live forever, but we do have more control over it. And we will transcend the sort of hardware limitations we have now, where we, our software, our mind file, which is a file of information, that is what it is. Uh, but right now it sort of runs on this hardware that has all kinds of limitations, it ages, it gets uh, dysfunctional, subject to all kinds of diseases. We'll ultimately be able to transcend all of that. And as to, you know, where does it come from and how does it evolve? I mean, I, we can't answer all of those questions. That's why we call it the singularity. Uh, we're making a, a metaphor. Uh, yeah. It's a metaphor barred from physics where you have this event horizon around a black hole that's very hard to see beyond. And there's a lot of interesting discussions. Can you, in theory, see inside a black hole? And, uh, I mean, it's a long, complicated discussion, but the point is it's very hard to see beyond that event horizon. So it's hard to see beyond the singularity because it's in some ways so different from life today that um, it's hard to see beyond. But I think some of the things we care about today are going to remain the same. Most of what we care about today is information. Uh, if you go back 100 years, most people did physical work. Most people today do mental work. They're journalists creating journalism stories, or they're writing something, or they're creating information about financial products. Or most people create uh, information, and uh, that will continue to be the case. And knowledge, human knowledge, is growing exponentially. The doubling time, I think, has been measured at about 14 months. So human knowledge doubles every 14 months. And so you go out 50 years, it's, we're going to be caring about the same thing, but it'll be that much more complex. We'll have many more types of music and art and science and technology and we'll be arguing about similar kinds of things but we'll have so instead of god creating the universe it's going to be the universe through us creating god uh i mean that's about as close to god as you can imagine i mean it, uh anything we've said about god would apply uh to the universe waking up in this way but it's still not infinite. I mean, it's, it's, it's vast. It's trillions of trillions of trillions of times greater than we are today, but it's still not infinite. So that's why I say evolution is a spiritual process because it moves towards greater complexity. It moves towards all the attributes that we attribute to God, intelligence, creativity, beauty, love. All of these things grow at an exponential rate. God has been described as having those attributes at an infinite level. Uh, we, even at this one we can expand to the rest of the universe. We won't be infinite, but it'll, you know, from our perspective today, it certainly will seem that way. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. That's wonderful.